Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is going to be on carbohydrate and fat intake and the correlation for heart disease. What does that mean? So we have carbs, we have fats, we have proteins. We typically have focused on carbs and fats as being potential risk factors one side or the other for increasing heart disease and death from cardiovascular issues. Let's go dive into it. We got a recent study that crossed my desk by The Lancet, which is a you know, like a tier one medical journal, just August 2017 here. And I'm gonna read you the title of the study was looking at the association between fat and carb intake and cardiovascular disease and mortality. They looked at it for over five continents and 18 countries. And again, they did kind of a survey data where they had people kind of, you know, write down what they ate and they ran the stats and they saw they had correlation. So there's not causation in this study. There wasn't a metabolic war that they threw people in and gave them foods. But it's, again, correlation kind of really forms the basis for our hypothesis where we develop mechanisms of why the foods that we eat cause problems. So let's dig in. So this study looked at the association. Now what they found in the conclusion was more carbohydrate, more carbohydrate increased total mortality. So your risk of dying from stroke, cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, all of those things went up. Now this is important. Now we have mechanisms that we've kind of formed in functional medicine world of why that may be. Part of it is one mechanism, one theory evolving insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is where the hormone insulin is hyper secreted, it's being pumped out at such high levels. Now, if you're insulin resistant, what does your body do with all that insulin? So number one, it's the carbohydrate, the excess carbs here that are driving this to go up. Now typically it's not gonna be from vegetable-based carbohydrates. Most of the time it won't even be from fruit-based carbohydrates. Now it could be if you're doing a lot of tropical fruits, there's a lot of sugar in those. A lot of times it's gonna be primarily from refined sugar, sodas, junk foods, those kind of things. But again, if you are insulin resistant, the fruits and the starches may even be too much for you to push the blood sugar up. Therefore, carbs go up, the insulin goes up as a response. And basically the insulin is the key in the door, right? It's the key in the door trying to allow the glucose into the cell. So here's the glucose right here, and it's trying to get into the cell so it can be utilized for fuel. Now the more insulin resistance there is, it's like we change the lock right? We change the lock. Your kid stays out too late. You change the lock while he's gone. He tries to come home. He can't come inside. So where does it go if it can't go to the cell? Well, all of this insulin, right, from the glucose, instead of going into the cell, it's actually going into the fat cell, all right? And when it goes into the fat cell, it increases triglycerides, TG, it also increases cholesterol. Cholesterol, one of the major drivers of cholesterol is high insulin. So we actually increase cholesterol and we form these things called foam cells as well. And foam cells can clog arteries and decrease blood flow going to parts of the heart, parts of the brain, right? Heart attack in the brain is a stroke. Heart attack in the heart is obviously a heart attack. And we have the coronary vessels where these foam cells really decrease blood flow. And part of it is via insulin, which drives the triglycerides up, right? And the more inflammation we have, especially foods like grains, right? These foods are more inflammatory, partly because of gluten sensitivity issues, partly because of insulin and mineral blocking, you know, um, features that grains have that other foods don't necessarily have as much. And that drives inflammation, right? Inflammation, our body responds by making all these cytokines and interleukins, and part of that's gonna drive more cholesterol because cholesterol is the band-aid for inflammation, okay? Think of inflammation as the cut, and the cholesterol is the band-aid. So imagine you have an artery here, okay? Imagine you have an artery, here's your artery, and every time we develop inflammation, okay, here's our inflammation, and it starts hitting that arterial wall, we're layering in band-aids here. And these band-aids come in and they start layering up and they start layering up and they start layering up. And then at some point over many, many years, we can develop a 50% blockage or the whole thing. And this is partly because of insulin resistance. Now, 
I use the word insulin resistance because certain people, their carbohydrate threshold for what drives insulin resistance may be lower, right? It may be 100 grams of carbohydrate or more, that may drive insulin resistance for some. Some who are more endurance athletes or exercise more or just have more muscle mass, their carbohydrate threshold may be three, four, 500 grams of carbohydrate per day. So again, we wanna choose healthy kind of paleo template foods that are anti-inflammatory, nutrient dense, low toxins, safe starches, sweet potatoes, squash, plantains, jicama, parsnips, rutabaga. Those are safer starches that are grain free and more anti-inflammatory. But typically anyone that's more on the insulin resistance side, we're trying to do three to four times more vegetables, smaller amounts of low sugar fruit, and starches are gonna be negligible for those people and the more insulin sensitive you, you can become, we can start pushing up some of those healthier, safer starches. But again, we have to make sure it's prescribed specifically to what the person needs. There's a lot of people that'll be watching this saying, well, I can do this many carbs. Again, you are the exception to the rule. If you are not insulin resistant, then you may be able to get away and you may have a little bit more wiggle room, but we still wanna work on driving inflammation down. So what causes heart disease? I address the mechanism. We have increased carbohydrate what kinds of carbohydrates primarily from starchy okay but more refined sugar sources where we're actually adding fructose glucose dextrose all these different carbohydrates or extra sugars to the mix so they they get into our bloodstream faster the faster we push up sugar in our bloodstream right the more insulin that comes back think of sugar as pulling that slingshot back okay the, the faster and the harder you pull it back means the blood sugar goes faster and harder into your system. So more refined sugar, the faster that slingshot of insulin goes back, okay? Really important. Safe starches, pull it back slower and not quite as far. Fruit, a little less. And of course, non-starchy vegetables, barely pull it back. So think about it, we wanna use less of a slingshot of insulin, so we wanna choose the right carbohydrates, non-starchy carbs are your friends, safe starches, and low glycemic fruits have to be earned based on your insulin resistance and your metabolic profile. Again, you wanna see your functional medicine doc to help you with that, to figure out where your macro should be and what you should be eating. But there are exceptions to every rule. And if you're insulin resistant, good way to know is blood pressure is higher, 140, 140 over 90 maybe. Your hip size or your waist size is gonna be greater than 40 for a male or 35 for a female around the belly button. You're gonna see fasting insulin markers above seven you're gonna have a hard time bringing your blood sugar down after a meal. So we typically would wanna see, so if here's our meal, right? We'd wanna be less than 100 here, less than 100, but then one hour, two hour, and three hour, we'd wanna be back down to less than 100, back down to less than 120, and ideally, 140, but ideally I like 120 for that as well. So this is kind of my functional glucose tolerance metrics that I use in my patients. This is a great way to see if the foods that you're eating are causing problems. So in general, the type of foods that you wanna be creating your healthy meal with are gonna be the follows. You're gonna have your protein, a palm to a fist, to a hand worth of healthy grass-fed or pasture-fed protein. We're gonna have healthy fats. And again, look at this. Increased saturated fats actually created a decreased risk of stroke. Why? If we go back to that insulin mechanism, saturated fat does not drive insulin up. And it's also nutrient dense. You get a lot of good fat soluble nutrients. Increased total fat was not correlated with any heart disease issues. Why? Well, total fat is going to increase meaning saturated fat. It's also going to mean monounsaturated fat like avocado and olive oil, and then we also have polyunsaturated fats, which are like fish oils. And again, these fats are very satiating. The better your, you know, you, your fat intake is, it actually decreases your appetite. The better your appetite is, guess what? You're gonna have less cravings for refined sugar and higher carbohydrate foods. Now this is important because if you already have insulin resistance, keeping your cravings in check is gonna be huge because you're gonna be reaching for things that will stabilize your blood sugar and not cause it to go wonky. The, the higher your blood sugar goes, the more your insulin will go. So again, this is Dr. J here signing off. Hope you enjoyed this video. Click and subscribe in the bottom left-hand corner and I appreciate it. And if you need any more help and you wanna dig in deeper to your heart disease issues, click down below and schedule a consult with myself and colleagues.
Thanks a lot. Have a great day.